Thinking about buying an airplane? You need to know some important stuff. We're talking to mechanics in the hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Welcome back to In the Hangar. I've got with me, uh, returning with me is Tom, John, and Mark. Guys, thanks for coming back and being, being on the show. We're talking about buying an airplane. I, I'm a new pilot, and I went out and bought my first airplane, a small little one, right? Cessna 210. So um, I want to ask you guys first, uh, you know, you're an AMP AI, you're an AMP AI, you're a very experienced uh, pilot. What is the what most important tip that you would give me about buying my first airplane? Let's start with Mark. There is no limit to what large sums of money won't cure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the secret to buying an airplane is to lots of money. have lots of money. Okay, all right, that's a good tip from Mark, the corporate pilot. So, John, what's, what's your number one tip? Uh, the best thing is to find uh, a relationship with a mechanic, find somebody with a similar aircraft, um, do a good pre-purchase inspection. Um, it, it depends upon what you're looking at now. You've got appraisers out there. They've got pre-buy services that you could hire somebody for. But really the bottom line is figure out what kind of an airplane you need, figure out what kind of components and what kind of avionics packages you want. Don't fall in love with the first airplane you see. That's the number one tip. You know, there's a lot of airplanes out there and the cost of avionics today, you brought that up on the other session, there's, the, the sky's the limit. It's changing every day. So get an airplane pretty much with the kind of components in there and that fits your needs now and sometime in the future. So what you're saying, and, and this is important because I heard this a lot when I was shopping. When you buy an airplane, buy it with the avionics you want because upgrading the avionics is incredibly cost. You'll lose 50% of the value of what your purchase cost is if you're reselling an airplane after you put avionics in it. That number could vary a little bit. Right, so but, you, what you're saying is if, if I let buy... Let the other guy take care yeah, of the cost. So if I buy an airplane and I go, ooh, I want a hundred thousand dollars in avionics upgrades when I turn around and sell that airplane I might get fifty thousand out of that a hundred thousand is what you're saying you're gonna get a lot less yeah it's like driving a brand so let new car. the other guy spent drop the hundred thousand avionics and you buy that for fifty thousand less right all right so Tom your your uh, number one tip for buying an airplane the relationship with the mechanic if you could find a mechanic with the airplane you'll save a lot of money going back with the pre-buy if you have a mechanic that's not familiar with that airplane, you, you will be paying him a lot of money to research the documents. And then if you buy the airplane and take it to another airport, now you've got to find another mechanic to do the same thing. Just because one guy went through the records, another guy's going to say, I'm going to do it again. So you're going to essentially pay twice the going rate. So a plane and the mechanic is kind of kind of the same. Try to Try to have it that paired together I'll save you a lot okay so as an as a new pilot and as a new plane owner you know when I was going to buy the plane how do you find a mechanic how, how do you know who to, to, to hire there, there's blogs so people come to me and they say hey I got to you know you're you're blah 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 can you help me on that I say, I'm not familiar with that airplane I'll do it but this is my rate per hour to research your paperwork however this guy in this field here is familiar with the airplane he probably even seen it you know, before. So that's what I would recommend. There's, there's a owner's blog. Um, All kinds of forums and clubs, internet type, type clubs. clubs. Type clubs, they call them, online. And they oh, type clubs. So like if I know that I've done my, my research of what kind of plane would fit my needs, let's say it's a Cessna 210, I can go online and, and, and go into a, a, a 210 forum and find 210 forum, Cessna forum, even the pilot's blogs. You've got a lot of pilot's blogs out there and find people with similar type aircraft. Just like the airport, the airport that you're going to be based at, find out who does the maintenance uh, out there. Find somebody that has a similar airplane. Go to the nearby airports if you have that option and get that opportunity to meet other owners and talk to them about it and get their opinion is really the most valued information you could find on your own. 
Okay, good. What's interesting, when I bought my plane, my partner had heard about you. And he says, oh, we need to go to Cessna John. And so um, that was, uh, that's how we found that was a little ironic, though. Well, it was really, really <laughs> small world crazy is that when, so we, we settled on that we were going to have you as our mechanic. So we're looking around the country and we find a plane in California. And we start going through the due diligence of that plane, getting serious with the potential of buying it. And we're going through the engine logs and your signature was all over it. And that came in really handy because I called you. You knew the plane. You remembered the plane. You knew the plane owner back then when it was in my part of the country, and I was able to call him and, and learn a whole bunch. That and, was uh, invaluable. Oh man! That but was, that's not often the that's, case. That's not. You know? That's not going to happen every time. And another thing that you want to look at when you're doing this is if you go into one of these shops and you see an old Piper Cub, you see a Cessna 210, you see a Walker, you see all these different Pipers and everything. You really it's helpful to find somebody that specializes in the model aircraft that you have. Okay, so if I buy, if I buy a, a Cherokee, I, I, I really need to go to a mechanic who specializes in Cherokee? Quite often, I won't say that's always the case, but quite often, if you could find somebody that knows your airplane, they know all the bulletins on that airplane, they've worked on that type model before, they're going to have a lot more intimate knowledge of that type of aircraft than a guy that's going to work on anything that comes through the door. Not to say they don't have mechanics there. If you're at a large shop, they're going to have mechanics. There's guys training Pipers, guys training Cessna. But type specific is very helpful when you're looking into aircraft ownership. Cirrus. I won't work on a Cirrus. I don't have any type training in a Cirrus. So you're going to really look for somebody that has a hangar full of Cirrus. You know, you've got a T210 and you walk in my shop any day and you're going to see other 210s there. Right. So, and that's not always the case. They may just have some, several mechanics and they're trained in several disciplines, but type specific is something to keep well, in mind. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, to that point, when I was flying to the East Coast and uh, near Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I had an issue, I had to land at an FBO, and I was, I was, <laughs> you know, they said, oh yeah, we're Cessna, you know, but they really did not know the 210. And uh, so yes, I hear what you're saying. Well, um, and they also called me to ask how to work on the airplane, and I had to give them step-by-step -step instruction. Yeah, so um, that, was, that was interesting. So um, what, what do you see common problems that, um, that, potential owners that are about to be owners as they're going out, what kind of, pro what kind of um, potholes do they step into in going to buy an airplane? Falling in love with the first airplane they see. Okay. All right. Don't do it. So going back, so are you low time pilot? Well, um, I'm, I'm within four hours of 500. So going, so insurance is a big hit yeah. on insurance and stuff like that. So you bought a plane that I'm sure the insurance company just loved you. Oh yeah, your, your minimum time. And again, so so. Oh, when I bought the plane, um, first of all, the 210 is a complex, high performance aircraft. Right, so there's a lot. Yeah. So I had to. Um, what I did is I went out and rented a uh, an RG, a Cardinal, and and got some time in that just to get up to the minimum 20 hours or whatever it was for the insurance. So that's an added cost of a plane. Oh yeah. So so you had to get additional training. Right. All this even before you could fly your airplane. Correct. So again, um, that's something to consider. Yeah, I could afford to buy the airplane. Only a plane is X amount of dollars. I have that. But you learn that there's extra training. That wasn't cheap and the insurance. Um, so that's something to consider. And a lot of people don't. They can afford the airplane. Like, I, I got to fly 20 hours to, to get in my airplane or, or I have to hire an instructor to fly with me if I want to go out to, to, to the East Coast and stuff right. like that. So. So there's a lot of, it's not so much hidden costs, it's there, but a lot of people don't, don't. consider it. Maybe right. it's not considered cost. It goes cost. back to a blog, finding somebody, um, you know, who's familiar with the plane and stuff like that. Um, you know, legally an A&P could work on everything, going back to your right. plane there. So you can land in a shop, don't have to jack to jack up your airplane to just to change a tire or, or swing the gear. Uh, so that's an extra time for them to hunt down a, a set of jacks. You'd think everybody has jacks, but the, 210 it happens to be higher than right. your average airplane, you need special jacks. Um, so that's why you have to find a shop that's done it before. 
and they have the tools there. And that's also a requirement by the FAA. They have to have the specific manuals for that airplane. You, know, you just can't use a general book for that. So, so Mark, as a pilot, um, whether you or somebody you know, what's, what's been something like where they bought a plane and immediately like stepped into it? What, because they didn't see it or they weren't aware? What's something that comes to mind? Uh, I can't think of anything right offhand, uh, but the, the same issue, falling in love with the first airplane. A lot of these guys, uh, going back to affordable, let's say a, yeah, a fabric, let's say a fabric airplane. Uh, well, the fabric pass inspection, does it need a recover? Can you find somebody that can recover your airplane? There's, these, are, these are things that, uh, that, that add to the expense. Uh, or your budget. You could only afford this airplane right well, now, and they're not looking at the big picture of what's going to be needed because there's a reason that airplane's that price. Well, even if, even if they, That's a big downfall. Even if you're, you can afford it, a lot of these parts are, are just unobtainable anymore. You can't, you can't find parts for some of these older airplanes, and even some of the newer airplanes, the uh, parts availability, uh, it's what we know is unobtainium. So what do you, well, you know, where, where do you go? 3D uh, printers for the millennials. Right? <laughs> well, we're learning that right now with we're, Mark's engine. You know, we're ordering parts that used to be $14 and now they're $400. So, you know, that's a factor of ownership, plain ownership, and that you need to consider. Well, I know that for me, I don't really consider that it, it's a pothole that I stepped into because I found out about it before I bought the plane and I was able to negotiate that in the buy. But for me, there was an AD out there on the 210 for certain cylinders that they had to be replaced at a certain number of hours. And so we were able to look at it and go, okay, this airplane's, you know, 300 hours away from having to have the cylinders replaced. And that was a big, that we knew going in that was going to be a big cost. But some people might buy an airplane and not realize there's an AD, uh, airworthiness directive that the FAA is mandating that it must be done. Well, that's diligence in your pre-purchase, though. This, yeah. this goes back to the value of the airplane is in the log books because these airworthiness directives or service bulletins that are published by the FAA for this particular type of airplane, this latest thing is the uh, wing attach points failing on that Cherokee. Oh, right, because of the, uh, the Florida crash. You, you, you go back. And, and from here on, everybody who buys a Cherokee or this type of an airplane, they're going to go back through the log books and see if these uh, airworthiness directives and service bulletins have been complied with, and that should be stated out right there in the log books. Uh, All right. Okay, so um, real quick, um, again, new airplane owner, I see TBO, time before overhaul, and it's rated for 1,400 hours or 1,600 hours or whatever it is. Um, when I first started looking at that, I thought that that was a thou shalt. So I thought at 1600, you would have to change the engine. I mean, what, what, what is the deal on that? Well, something that I heard in a Tony Saxton seminar one time that was very uh, enlightening to me as an airplane owner as well. At any given time, if you cannot afford to put an engine in your airplane, then you can't afford an airplane. Now, personally, most of my life, I could not afford an airplane. Yeah. So it was a very uh, realistic uh, approach to aircraft maintenance. So just because you have a TBO number or just because everything's good at the time of purchase, uh, in your case, then AD came out. Now, you knew about that in advance from the cylinders. Well, I just built a new motor for my airplane. I've got an AD out on my cylinders, and that was after the fact, and I already purchased new cylinders. Oh. So, you know, you have to expect these things along with ownership. And TBO, again, we discussed earlier about repair stations. If you're for hire, if you're part 91, there's all kinds of different regulations that apply differently. Right. So it depends upon your type of operation and what you're planning to do. Uh, the whole TBO issue. Yeah, there is
It's a thou shalt. In most, shalt. in most though, there's waivers, you know, like right. everything, there's rules that apply differently. So you'd have to find out what rules apply to you. So yeah, on a TBO, uh, on a pri private aircraft, not, not being used for hiring and stuff like that, you can go past it. I have flown planes, engines where you pass it, but, but now we increase the maintenance. We're changing the oil twice as much and we're analyzing the oil. You know, we're doing a little, little more um, inspection, keeping an eye on that. If we see more debris in the oil, then yeah, okay. But you can, the other thing about TBO is really interesting. You can go past it. If you stop at TBO, it's, it's not a guarantee and you split the engine um, and, and, and the parts pass inspection, they can rebuild it. You know, you don't have to buy a new uh, crankshaft and stuff. But if you go past TBO, now you warn that crankshaft smaller and you can't put it in there, you gotta buy a new one. So so if you're at TBO, you, you, you might be able to reuse your crankshaft and a lot of expensive right. parts. But if you go way past it, um, now now you're gonna... You know, yeah, the risk yeah. of more parts right. and more wear. Right. It's gonna be more expensive so to do the overhaul. It, if you're gonna sell the airplane, you know. <laughs> or if you're gonna buy a factory engine. You right. know, if you're going to go factory right. new. So right. a lot of these variables there's, take place. Yeah, here. there's so many things to do that. Well, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this discussion. So hopefully uh, you guys out there enjoyed um, finding out some information about buying an airplane. So as always, please share, comment below, and always subscribe. Thanks for watching.